Hello friends, so as you can see I bought myself a DSLR, it's a Canon EOS 60D and I bought that just a couple of days ago and I want to use it to record material for future episodes. Problem is it has a faulty SD card slot and I'm going to repair that in this episode and after that we're going to take a look at the other cameras here and then compare the quality of the video footage of the 60D with the Sony camcorder that I have been using for the past three years. Okay, so I bought this camera here as a used part and as a broken unit for 220 euros while at this point in time in Germany it is normally worth around 400 euros. So this is kind of a gamble if I'm able to repair it, then the value of this camera will probably be double what it was before. And if I don't make it, well, then I just lost 220 euros. So what exactly is the issue with this camera? Well, as soon as you turn it on and insert an SD card into the SD card slot, the display reads Speicherkarte schreibgeschützt, which means storage card is write protected or read only. And that happens no matter what SD card I'm using. I have a whole range of them lying around and it doesn't work with any of them. And as most of you probably know, there's a little switch on these SD cards that is used to switch the card into the read-only mode or to lock it. Now, obviously I have tried that and it has nothing to do with the position that the little lock switch is in. The mechanism, most probably just a contact inside the SD card must be worn out or broken in some way and that is why I'm going to take the camera apart now and take out the SD card board and then I will try to fix this issue. So first of all I remove the lens. This is a 50 millimeter lens that I bought for another 80 euros also as a used part. So the 220 euros were just for the camera body itself and I protect the opening and I also take out the battery. Now I will start to open the enclosure by taking off the back plastic cover of the camera's body and I do that with the help of a mini screwdriver set, the type of which you can find for example on Amazon for around 10 euros these days. And these are simply very small Phillips type screws. Now there is one screw behind the LCD, you can tilt that to the side and you can take it out. And then you have to take off this rubber part around the viewfinder and you will find there three more screws that you have to unscrew and then three screws on the bottom of the camera. And you also have to remove two little screws holding the plastic part that covers the hinge of the LCD. And to be honest, I actually screwed that up a little bit. Uh, no pun intended. The plastic part was very brittle and had a few cracks and I kind of ruined that while taking it off but you have to take that off before removing the entire back panel of the camera. And then there are three more screws that you can find behind this rubber part here that also have to be unscrewed before you can take off the back part. But after removing those screws under that rubber cover, you should then be able to, maybe with a little wiggling, get the entire plastic back panel off. That is then only attached to the rest of the camera by means of one single flat flex cable that uses one of two types of connectors that you're going to encounter in here. This type of connector can be levered off just very gently with a small screwdriver for example. And as you can already see it is quite densely packed in here and our board that holds the SD card slot is not on top but lies beneath a larger PCB that we will first have to remove somehow. Now we don't have to remove it entirely, but we have to be able to tilt it to the side so that we can reach the SD card board. And in order to do that, it is necessary to remove a whole range of flat flex cables from this top board. Now some of these cables have the same type of connector that we saw before. Some are more traditional, I would say, flat flex cables that sit inside a kind of slot where there is a little plastic bar that has to be pushed open so that the flat flex cable is released. And then the PCB is also held down by a handful of small screws that I have to unscrew here as you can see in the video and is held by this rather large flat flex cable that I loosen at the other end 
And then there is this flat flex cable that connects the SD card board and the top board here. And I also lever that off. And then you will also find another cable, this time really consisting of wires, connected to the bottom side of the top board that you also have to pull out ever so gently. And what we see here is a metal shield covering the SD card board. And on that metal shield is some tape that you can loosen with a screwdriver or a knife. And under that you will also find a small flat flex cable that also has to be disconnected from the SD card board. And now finally, after having unscrewed some screws before, I'm able to bend up the metal shield without actually taking it out and then pull out the SD card slot board from underneath. And here we have a close up of the actual SD card slot. And if you take a closer look, you can see that there's a little gold plated spring contact here that is totally bent out of shape. And it is supposed to be connected to the chassis ground or at least to the metal enclosure of the SD card reader when the SD card is inserted, but not in read only mode. So a simple brute force solution here is to connect this spring contact constantly to the chassis ground, thus telling the camera that an SD card that is inserted is not in read-only mode. Now the problem is that the spring contact is so bent out of shape and worn out that I cannot bend it back into a functional shape and there might be the danger that it might block an SD card from entering the slot if I bend it in the wrong direction. So what I decided to do is to completely remove that thing. I cut a little piece out of the slot, which was not necessary, but I wiggled off the contact so that it could no longer hinder anything from entering the slot. And then I looked for the actual pad on the PCB that is electrically connected to that spring contact. I did that with the help of a multimeter. And then I took a piece of wire and soldered that from that pad directly to the metal enclosure of the SD card slot so that this pin would be directly pulled down to chassis ground telling the camera permanently that an inserted SD card is not in read-only mode. And after having done that I basically did everything we already saw but just in reverse. I put the camera back together thinking of course of all those little screws and flat flex cables and if you want to do the same thing I guess it's best if you watch my video, write down a list of every step that you see in the video and then go that list backwards or something like that. So as you can see, the camera takes the SD cards again and as far as I can tell, it all seems to work just fine. Okay, so everyone who watched this video simply to see how the issue with the EOS 60D can be fixed could just stop to watch this video right now because everything that I'm going to talk about from this point on is probably only interesting for long-term viewers or fans of this channel. Now, why do I even have uh, DSLRs here on the workbench? Well, the thing is that up to this point, I have been using, in addition to my Sony camcorder, this uh, point-and-shoot camera from Sony. It's a DSCW 170, which, well, back in the day, and that must have been about like 2006 or 2007 or something like that, had quite good reviews and I bought that years later I guess in 2013 as a used model for only 40 euros and I used this camera basically for every uh, for each and every picture or still image that ever appeared in any of my videos ever since 2013 and well let's say that it's not a bad camera for its class but the control that you have over the camera itself is very limited so I probably should have bought a DSLR that allows for manual focus and also manual zoom a long time ago. 
so much about that camera. So that's why I recently thought about buying a DSLR and what I ordered is this EOS 20D here, which is a sort of a mid-range uh, semi-professional DSLR that was announced I guess in 2004 or 2005. It's not a bad quality camera, but simply very old fashioned by today's standards. And I only realized that really when I already had the camera and were uh, experimenting with it. So the first thing that I uh, saw that is that it doesn't even use SD cards, but CF cards, which are way more expensive these days if you go for how much storage space you get for which money you have to pay. And this camera is also incapable of filming or producing video material at all. And while there are programs that can be used to uh, upgrade older Canon cameras, like the Canon EOS 50D that was not originally intended for filming, but uh, can be, well, sort of upgraded uh, with, with new firmware, third-party firmware, uh, to be used as a video camera, as far as I know, it is not possible to do that with this old model here. Now, I made some rather nice pictures with this camera, as you can see here. And I guess it would be good enough for just still pictures that could appear in my videos. But, well, just a couple of days later, more or less, I realized that I needed something a little better and that is why I bought the 60D. Now I paid around 80 euros for the body of the 20D with I guess 18 months or something of warranty. So that's also not a bad deal. Then about 70 or 80 euros for the 50 millimeter fixed focal length um, lens. Um, but well, you can see 80 euros for this or 220 euros for this, a camera with, I guess, 18 megapixels instead of eight with, uh, the, with a built-in capability to film HD video and so on. So I guess that this gamble was worth it now that I have uh, accomplished what I was aiming for to repair this camera. And what I also bought is another lens and I will guess, I guess that I will send this camera in and this lens back because I paid around the same money that's 70 or 80 euros for this lens here which well has not a fixed focal length of 50 millimeters but can be varied between 18 and 55 millimeters and so here we are this time actually filming with the help of the Canon EOS 60D and well, don't expect too much of the adjustments of that camera or the camera settings at this point because I've only had that camera for one day and just repaired it yesterday evening. So I had no time to familiarize myself with that camera all that much. But it can be an opportunity to get a first impression about what the video footage may look like. And it's also an opportunity to talk about the camera that I have been using for over three years now. This is a Sony HDR CX130E that I bought for, I guess, around 130 euros as a used part back in 2013. And I have used this camera to produce over 100 videos. And it doesn't show any signs of real aging at this point, really, just optical things maybe, but it's still working pretty, pretty well. Um, the only problem really is that you do not have direct control over the focus. Of course, there is only an automatic focus feature in this camera. On the other hand, it can score with uh, rather impressive uh, zoom capabilities and that allows for recording stuff that is in the microscopic range sometimes, maybe uh, up to things that are extremely far away and also kind of a wide angle uh, shots. So it's not a bad thing to have. And if you want to start a YouTube channel and you don't want to spend all that money, then maybe you should check uh, eBay for an HDR CX130. I have had the best of experiences with it, but I hope that my new DSLR will open new possibilities for me. And well, I was actually planning to show you a lot of comparison footage in this video between this camera and the new one, but I'm actually kind of tired after all this repair work. And um, 
maybe I should learn a little more about the settings of the Canon EOS 60D before um, showing you comparison footage because that just wouldn't be fair. Um, other than that, uh, on another note, I have found a new room in Cologne already and it was only because of the video that I made. Actually, a viewer who doesn't live all that far away, just a couple of hundred meters, watched the video and he contacted me only a couple of minutes after I had uploaded the video. So, sorry guys, I hate to tell you, but everybody who doubted me for uploading that video, it helped a lot and I think that the next video will be about the new room because I will move there in a couple of days. Other than that, I have worked on the new video projector and the parts for that should have come here two weeks ago, but they only arrived here yesterday. And I put a couple of hours into that and I think that you will see a video about that soon as well. The question is only, will it be first about the new room or about this one? So guys, that's it for today. I hope you like this and see you soon.